Hello everyone, it's me, Con from Seafoam Gaming, back again with another attempt at unscripted memories. I say attempt because I'm still getting back into the routine of doing my usual work and whatnot, and also having to deal with stress, anxiety, and all that, and also the fact that I am sweating like mad today, like holy frick, I'm sweating. <sighs> so here I am, right before bed. Talking about Pokemon! You can see because I have a Pokemon that's not even in the show that I'm talking about today. It's Delphox. Fox Mom. Dodo Fox. Not the evil Greninja. So anyways, I decided I'd make this as a bit of a casual introduction to my planned project since 27... 18? 17? I don't want to... Oh god. I think it was 2017. God, that's... I feel ancient. That was so long ago, but it felt so recent, too. Because I remember going to this place in 2018 with my friend, but what I planned for that wasn't there, so... Yeah, Ohanacon, 2017. That was in Madison, Wisconsin, the Pokemon Nash Regionals. That was, like, a big event they had planned and whatnot, and I heard about from a friend that the actor for Ash was going to be there. So I brought my DVDs and a few other things for her to sign, and also Eric Stewart, but I'll show my reasons for why I'm not as fond of him. But, um, basically, I could meet some old Pokemon voice actors, probably get a cool video too with them, and yeah, that actually did work, and since then, I had a plan to do a video retrospective memories of the Pokemon anime. Because, you know, I went over the Team Go Getters episode in the first ever Eternal Memories. Wow. Five years ago, almost. And then I kind of went over the the two Explorers ones in the other episode, so I didn't go into as much detail. In fact, I kind of skimmed over them. I may want to redo them. Like that part, like the anime dots. So, um, I did cover those. And then when there was Fathom events showing for the 20th movie in 2017 and the 21st movie in 2018, I went to them both, I made video reviews on them, and compared to my, my other unscripted memories and even some eternal memories, they blew up! Somehow they got more views than my other content, especially my unscripted ramblings, which surprised me and made me happy because I figured I have a formula that people like, they, even if without footage, they don't mind seeing a guy ramble about something they like if, you know, the guy rambling is honest. And I am honest. You know, my throat's still and I need one of these because, yeah, I got prepared this time. So I decided that for unscripted memories, I would do the Pokemon Emmy retrospective I planned out in 2017. I had this long multi-part process, I think about 5-10 episodes about each arc of the anime, some ways my favorite moments, my favorite disappointments, my experiences growing up and whatnot. I had all that planned for Eternal Memories. In fact, in 2017, I planned to do a Vidme exclusive episode on the 10th anniversary of the Polygon episode, where the infamous seizure incident happened, because that's around the time when the Polygon episode happened and seizures happened and they had to tone down the anime lights and other anime and even other special effects in order to make them because they realized that wow we can't have kids get their eyes hurt again so i planned to do a 10th anniversary special on that going to death and what happened i even got some old broadcast footage and whatnot saved to my desktop then uh gary and weaver a youtuber i really like who makes anime reviews of each pokemon episode he got hit with a bunch of copyright strikes from Showpro, who's one of the people that licensed out the anime. Uh, they're dictators on YouTube. That sounds extreme, but they really are. Like most anime animation companies, I noticed, if they block a content, they block it worldwide. But usually, you know, they say, hey, this is our show, we block it worldwide, and it's usually just four episode re-uploads or a review of tons and tons of footage. Most of the time, it just gets claimed, which is no big deal, but some people make it a big deal because of the YouTube ad revenue. I don't care about that. I just want my stuff to be viewable. But ShowPro basically hit this guy hard because he, he basically reviewed each episode and showed clips from each episode. And 
they all got hit by Soul Pro. Usually it's automated and they just go away. But for the Polygon episode, no, they 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 stayed their ground. And since then they've been striking a bit of his content, blocking it worldwide, and he had to move it to his own website just to make the reviews. And yeah, that's kind of scary. So when I saw that, I was like, oh god, I don't want that to be how my retrospective ends up. But no worries, I thought Vidme will be fine because I could knew it without copyright worries. And then son of a bitch, Vidme closed down. They cocked out. They basically closed down without any warning and their, their creators do goodbye messages and whatnot. I'm seriously going to make a Vidme a tunnel memories, or I'm going to make a Vidme retrospective at one point, because that site was a dumpster fire. I met a few good people off it, but most of the time it was just a weird community with weird... Weird promotion methods, and they blocked me because I actually poked fun of net neutrality and called for it to be just taken apart because I was of the camp that well, like it hasn't been around forever and like it's not as big of a deal as they were making it out to be. And I still believe that even though there are a lot of internet privacy like that, uh, European thing that's really messed up but didn't get too far, thankfully, there are a lot of internet privacy laws that are concerning. But that was one I didn't find that concerning, and even, hey, now, nothing happened for, related to that. So, uh, yeah, net neutrality, the creators, the website actually blocked me on Twitter because I poked fun of them for um, deliberately making their website intrusive because of that. Like, some sites got a bit too preachy about that political stance, and basically made it so that the website would constantly buffer and show up pop-up ads and annoying stuff, basically cut the push the false narrative of, oh hey, if you if you don't save that neutrality, then they'll make you go spend twenty dollars a month to watch YouTube. And like, no, that's not what, that's not what it is at all. And that's been debunked, and lo and behold, it's gone. But that's not even what's happening. It, the the st the real things that we lost from using that were data caps and other meddlings and throttling, which is a big deal. But people blew out of proportion, made people not want to take it seriously. Vidme was, I guess, trying to preach to the choir or be the hip people, so, um... Then I didn't like Vidme, and then I especially hated him when he closed down the website without warning, I couldn't even make a goodbye message, or... I was actually in the middle of filming and scripting for the Polygon retrospective, and I had to trash all of it because of that freaking site shutdown. God, I hate that site, and God, that's a reason YouTube will never get compared to, because none of them will really, honestly, none of them can really live that long, or have good intentions. But anyways, 2020 is a new year, stuck at home, so now I'm going to flee to the a vacation cabin in a few weeks, because we still can do that, I found out, so I may have to slow down production in the summer, but I'm still going to try and do some episodes up in the summer, just got to find a good spot and private place to do it. And yeah, so today I'm gonna talk about the Pokemon anime. Just not the whole season one, just I think I'm gonna go over why I got into it and some memories I have, and then just start the full blown seasonal breakdown next time I cover Pokemon. So yeah. So what happened after the Poygon incident and why did I stop that episode? Well, because Show Pro is abusive. And also because I decided that I just stick to my usual unscripted methods of making reviews because my, as I said, my iTunes do review did really well compared to my other stuff I do for this show. So I decided to keep stuff in that format. Um, Detective Pikachu and the Power of Us, they both got reviewed by me and people seem to like them. So I think I'm going to cover more anime and topics that I can't show for copyright concerns. But I can still be unscripted while doing it. And funny story before we get into today's subject, because this is the show about rambling, and I ramble a lot after all, but um, I actually was a victim of show pro even with my hyper restrictions to avoiding anything regarding their draconian blocking worldwide policy. Um, so in my I Choose You, I had little elements from the movie in the corner, like I show pictures of Lucario and some other characters now and then. That was fine. That actually didn't get me in trouble. It was the poster for the movie in my thumbnail. I'm not kidding. My thumbnail for the review that had a poster of the movie poster in the thumbnail 
my usually unscripted memories, Gold Border, my my breaks in Persona on the side, and it was like the subject tile in the center. I had a movie poster there. They had me remove that because they blocked my video worldwide because they considered it a copyright infringement because I showed a poster of their movie and it wasn't just a claim. They blocked my video. I couldn't play it anywhere. So I had to appeal the block for one thing. They got lifted, thank God. But it was a manual block, so it wasn't some automated bot going haywire. That's kind of concerning if you ask me. But the point stands that I felt the need to just be careful. So I replaced the poster with, I think it was ho -Oh or Ashes Pikachu. I know for Power of Us I did Zero Aura or Lugia. I think it was Zero Aura. And for Detective Pikachu, I think I just did that logo because that was safer because that wasn't so pro, thank God. But with this anime retrospective, I'm going to be showing um, probably my fursona, if I may be honest. Or at least the season-ish items, like maybe the Kanto badges for Kanto, or maybe certain Pokemon like Togepi or Pikachu, or Fortress or Mudkip. I'll think of something to make the thumbnails interesting without having to risk show pro being me to death. So with all that started, let's get started with the beginning. The beginning of how I got into the Pokemon anime and this long journey we will go on for probably a few years. The day I first saw the Pokemon anime, I cannot honestly tell you. It's kind of a really mixed, very mixed memory of what happened. I don't think I even touched upon this too much. I, I don't honestly remember if I shared the story on Eternal Memories, but I first got into Pokemon itself when a kid named AJ, I believe, he, his game file was named AJ, so that's why I'm guessing. But this kid came over to my mom's house, showed me this Game Boy Color game he had called Pokemon Yellow, and he was super, super into it. And his mom brought him over, and I was like, ooh, cool game, cool music, and all that. And he had a Pikachu version. And I was like, wow, that looks cool. But then for some reason, I don't know why, maybe my mom made him, or maybe I was just, I don't know. But he basically gave me his cartridge of Pokemon Yellow. And I basically put it in my Game Boy, figured out how it worked, and throughout the next few weeks, I believe, I prowled through the entire game. I beat the Elite Four. I know this because I vividly remember being the Elite Four with his team of haphazardly named Pokemon like AJ, CJ, and all that stuff. I don't know why, but I caught my own Pokemon and didn't name them. But that was my first vivid memory of Pokemon as a whole. It must have been when I was two or three years old. I don't think the kid ever got his game back, or if he did, I didn't give it to him. My mom must have, or she pawned it like she usually did. And I never got to say, hey kid, I beat the game for you while you let me borrow it. So that was kind of a bit amusing. But then it was on Kids WB, and I was watching that because I like kid stuff. I watched Cartoon Network, and I was on Cartoon Network too. So along with all sorts of Cartoon Network stuff like... Well, cartoon cartoons and Ed and Eddie, those were some things I remember watching first as a kid. Um, Pokemon was on Cartoon Network, and then it was on Kids WB. And it was pretty much, not everywhere, but it was those two places back then. And so my love of Pokemon began. I got Pokemon... S yeah, my own Pokemon Lelo. I got a separate Pokemon Lelo from my grandmother... They actually still have my bag, but the save battery might be on the verge of dying, so I made a backup as a stadium, if I may be honest. But, um, I have my original Pokemon Little, and that second copy was one I played myself, had more... I did the same stuff over, but it was more personal, since it was my file and whatnot. But that got me into Pokemon, and then I got Sapphire, then I got Fire Red, I got gold, silver, blue, then emerald before I was relocated. Not counting the spin-offs, I got pinball, sapphire, and also um, Coliseum. But besides those two, I that was all the Pokemon I played before my relocation to my grandparents. And as you know, episode 1, Soul Memories, talked about Mystery Dungeon. That was the game that changed my life after that relocation. So even afterwards, it was pretty big in my life. But... In the midst of all that, I was a huge fan of the anime. Kids WB would air it often, mostly every week. 
and I just watched whatever was on. Me and my mom was also in like late 2004, rent videotapes from the library of all the Pokemon episodes that we could find. These were season 1 episodes, and this was how I watched the majority of that season. Cartoon Network would have some bits and pieces here and there, but most of the time they were showing off Johto or the Orange Islands, while Kids WB showed off the War Islands and eventually advanced. So for me, my I don't know the first episode I ever watched, to be honest. I know some of the first VHSs I ever got, because of the rental store, and that was the first season of Pokemon. We mostly got all the Pioneer Interactive VHSs up till the one with Togepi. So I think that was like 10 or so. Um, and these VHSs were really nostalgic. I actually, when I first planned to make this a scripted episode, I had all of them laid out on my desk. And the Pokey Friends one was one I remember vividly the most because it came with some really kick ass anime trailers that I still remember to this day. It came with a trailer of Kimba the White Lion, the new show from the 90s. And I remember when I discovered it, because, you know, as I, you know, I'm a furry and I like furry-related TV shows that are cute. In the 2010s, I discovered it again through Netflix, and I watched it via the DVD rental service. And I was like, wow, this seems really familiar to me. I found this based on the Japanese anime, but I was like, it still is familiar, but I don't remember seeing this as a kid. Boom. This Pokey Friend features, it made me remember that, yes... Pokemon had a trailer for Kimba the White Lion on it. It was the 90s dub new cartoon that people don't like. Now, I think it's actually lost media, or at least not on DVD. Um, but I vividly remember the trailer for that in Poke Friends. And also, a trailer for Wama One Half, a movie for Wama One Half. I knew nothing about it except that it looked a lot like Inulasha. And lo and behold, it was made by the person who made the new Lasha, and I didn't know it back then, but it looked like a cool movie, never got to see it. I think if it's on Blu-ray or DVD, I should buy it, because it still looks like a really cool movie. But yeah, the Pioneer VHSs were basically, even though I watched on TV a lot before then, my gateway drug into the chronological order of Pokemon. Because when I started watching that, I was old enough to know that, yeah, plots connect, yeah, stuff happens, it's not all randomized like Ludot was as a kid. And now I have to get into the complete saga. And boy, it was a long journey to get that possible. So let's just, before we talk about the first season in another video, let's just talk about the weird mismatched memories I have of just the whole anime in general. So, for the most part, I already explained the Pioneer VHS has been very nostalgic for me. And even now, they're kind of... I have some charm to them. Like, you can buy the whole season on DVD now, save for the banned episodes and one off Jinx, but um, the Pioneer VHSs were just nostalgic to me because of the presentation, the Ancient for Kids logo, the trailers like those Kimba and Wama One Half trailers I mentioned, and just VHS quality. It was just nostalgic for me. But as I said, I couldn't get past the Togepi episode because our video library didn't have it. In fact, the Sabrina episode, there was a VHS that had the... Sabrina episodes on it. I think the ghost episode and the Sabrina ones. Um, we had no problem getting the one with Erica's gym. That was easy. But the Sabrina episode? Oh lord. That one was out of the library for so long. I don't even know how we got it in the end. I guess through perseverance. But everyone went to that. That was like the most popular VHS of the set next to the first episode. I choose Lou, the VHS of that. But um, yeah, the Pokemon anime. Those Pioneer VHSs were very nostalgic. But not only were they nostalgic, but Kids WB was. I could make a whole episode about the whole Kids WB block and my memories of Yu-Gi-Oh, Mucha Lucha, and all those bad shows I had to go through to watch the good stuff. But Pokemon was a highlight. And I remember... I don't know, again, the first episode I watched, I don't know. But I do know one of the first I remember vividly. It was one of the World Cup episodes when it was new. I think it was in 2002 or 2003. And I remember watching it in my in an apartment with my mom. And I was unhappy for some reason because I think I was hungry. And my mom didn't know what to do because she bought this new food called Pizza Walls. And she was like, oh, hey, Con, it's really good. But I don't like eating any new. I get very aggressive against trying new foods. So I did not want to eat it because it looked icky and I did not know what it would taste like. And so my mom put it on a little tray and put it in the oven and baked it. 
And then I remember still upset but watching Pokemon because I assume it was put on to make me focus and not be so sad. And lo and behold, when the pizza rolls were done, I took a bite and it was the best thing I've ever had. At least cooked through the pan. I still like them through the microwave, but I, either it was just her cooking, the brand, or just the magic of putting them in the, up in the oven and cooking them that way. Because they tasted so good. And I vividly remember how great they were. And I think I went to the bathtub after the episode was over and just ate them. Because I want, I had to take a bath, but I didn't want to stop eating them. So I think she just let me eat the whole tray because I was just that in love with them. But yeah, it was one of the World Cup battles. I think it was Misty versus that girl trainer. It wasn't the Ash versus Misty battles, the one after that. I remember that on Kids WB solely because it was how I got exposed to pizza rolls. And that's one of my favorite foods, so now I don't eat because of a diet reason, but... Yeah, that's a good memory, and that's one of the more random memories. More random memories come from how I remember being in my little tent in my bedroom as a kid when we had a better apartment, and I'd wake up, turn on the TV, and Pokemon was on white in the early mornings on Cartoon Network. I saw a few Orange Islands episodes that way. Me and my mom watched, I think, the two-parter of the Lapras episode and the Brimp episode. I think it was a free part, and I didn't think about it. But either way, it was still a really good episode, set of episodes, and me and my mom really liked it, and we were hoping to see more. We saw... I don't think we saw much more, if I'm being honest. I'm trying to think of, did we see past the first three episodes? But no, after the last lap was, I think we didn't get to see any more of the Orange Islands. If I did, it was like random we ones here and there that were out of order and I didn't pay attention to. But I don't remember watching the whole series season until I got the DVD in 2009. So that was a bit of a bummer, but that's not memory I have, just waking up early in my little tent, like a two bed, it was like beds on top of each other, this bed you climbed up to the top of a ladder, I was on the bottom bed, no one was on the top bed, maybe my mom was, but I didn't pay attention, all I know is that I just wake up there, make a tent out of my blanket, and then watch Pokemon, it was a good time, probably some good memories before all the bad stuff happened, I think it was 2002, again, 2001 when I remember that, and I, again, Kids WB Cartoon Network, I believe that's all the memories I have of the pre-cartoon, permanent Cartoon Network move in 2006, because that's another episode when we get to, I guess, season 9, because that's a whole controversy involved. But basically, yeah, I just watched bits of certain seasons here and there, and the memories I have the most fondness of were the Pioneer VHSs, the whole... Pizza Wall situation with the World Cup as the first major Pokemon memory I remember from watching, you know, it live. And then the whole Cartoon Network tent memories of the Orange Island saga. I mean, I see a little bit of pieces here and there. I remember watching the that uh, Misty Mermaid episode as a kid because I think it was on TV on Cartoon Network as a wee one. And I remember for some reason, because it was before the episode about the eighth badge, I thought when I, I heard the name, I think it was from a TV guide, but it didn't have a description. So I thought that episode was literally about Giovanni turning Misty into a mermaid with some Team Rocket shenanigans. Because I had no idea what the title meant, but no, it just meant her performance at the Cerulean Gym. No Team Rocket shenanigans here. Though they did have a good a gym battle, but we'll get into that in the proper intro. And I think that's it for my intro to the anime, just... Don't remember the specifics of how I got to the anime, more so the games. But I do remember the fond memories of, you no, know, the first VHSs I got, the first broadcast airings I remember, and just some nostalgic episodes overall. So next time I go into the Pokemon anime, I'm gonna start with season one, the Kanto Saga, and just talk about my favorite episodes, my least favorite episodes, my favorite moments, and how I got off the whole season overall. Until next time, bye! We'll talk about, I guess, this and, I don't know, a Leo 2 when I get to Kados.